You're always there with a positive note. I love that. <laughs> oh, and there goes my stupid phone. There. I see Robin down there too. Hi. Hi, oh, there's Robin. Oh, wow. Is that what we call the meeting to order or wait for Mary to come back? I'm here. Okay. I just had to shut off the ringer, which I really don't know how to do, but I figured it out. Okay, here I am. Okay, so everybody's here? It's that way. Okay, then I will call the meeting to order at four o'clock on the button. <laughs> there I am. <laughs> I had to rearrange okay. and run a bit in my kitchen. Okay. <laughs> okay. Everybody back? Well, we have the minutes of the last scholarship committee meeting. Anybody want to approve the minutes? I'll make a motion we approve the minutes from the meeting of May 4th, 2020. 2020. I second the motion. Thank you. Okay. I, have so I guess the others can't. The only ones that were at the meeting are Mary and I and Mary, right? Right. Okay, so we're here to talk about the scholarship. And we had talked about it at the um, last board meeting. And we decided at that point not to give a scholarship this year. So. Right. We're going to um, come up with some ideas about what we might do with the scholarship money. Uh, Judy, I, I'd just like to, to if it's okay, um, just a, a little bit of history on that. Um, I feel kind of guilty because I hope that I didn't um, force the board to not do the scholarship this year. It's just that there's been a lot of um, talk and a lot of question about uh, with the pandemic about how fair it was and so on and so forth. So the board did make the decision to not do the scholarship this year. And I think that our committee now is being charged with coming back to the board with um, suggestions on whether to continue the scholarship or not continue the scholarship. And if so, should there be changes? Uh, I think that's kind of our, our purpose right. today. Okay, yes, thank you. So, um, but uh, I guess we, I, I was thinking back, you know, like where did the scholarship start? Was it, I wasn't sure if it was um, from Plumtree School and when Plumtree School. I think it was the Blue Jay. Uh, or was it Apple Blossom, Blossom, Festival. Apple Blossom Festival? The Apple Blossom Festival afforded okay. it. I think the Plumtree's Association whatever that was, it started it. It's been around for a long time. Yeah, I know it's been around for a long time. So, but, uh, so that was just like a little history. And I know that Blue Jay Orchards, um, that it, I, I thought I don't have any um, thing to say about it, but. Yeah, I could go back and, and uh, go back through the archives and see if we could come up with a little bit of a history that we could present to the board. Um, that would I be think nice. Uh, probably that there is no money left from that event. I think we're down to $3,000 and that's really the library board of directors money. So okay. technically the money has all been spent from the scholarship itself. Okay. Now it really is library money. And okay. we have put that money in from the proceeds right. from our fundraising. Right, is the scholarship um, fund, I looked up on a minute, you know, from last time the um, treasurer's report, Mm -hmm. And um, I, for this, under the scholarship fund, it said there's $5,000 left. 5000 5000 or 3000 Is it five? I, I stand to be correct. I think it's 5000 according to the, uh, yeah, 
for the treasurer's report. Well, that's good. I like your numbers better. Yeah. $5,649.24. Okay. But you're right. I don't think any of that is money that was left over. Or the, but I, you know, maybe some history would be good. I don't know. Where would you find that? Well, I'd have to go back through all the archives of all the minutes and so on and so forth. Oh, okay. okay. Which, which I can try and do. Okay. Um, if well, they I let you into town hall so that I could get into the, to the old records. Or I, I don't know what Megan has in the office, but I, I, I can pursue that. Okay, thank you, um, Mary. That would be good. So uh, what are some I, I, new, I'm sorry. One of the um, the ideas that came up since since we met is that, and that's why Jan is here today. Jan, thank you so much for attending. Um, she, the wheels turned in her mind after our last board meeting that she was present at, and she took it to the Friends of the Library. Um, and they have, I, I guess I, it would be fair to say, Jan, they have some interest in maybe taking it over? No, 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 no. Not taking it over, but in collaborating with, with you. Um, and we, we can do that under our call to support library events and activities. So we were, you know, thinking that if you decide to continue with the scholarship, we would be more than willing to make a financial contribution, um, whether it's half, you know, whatever, because I don't know what you normally give, uh, but we do not want to take it over. Well, you don't. Because I was thinking that that would be uh, that that would be fine, but because you raise money, we don't <laughs> really sure. raise money. Huh? <laughs> uh, but you don't want to, right? That's good to have that understanding right from the beginning. Yes, so you no, no, we want to take it over. Okay. Yes, so you, we you, would be more than happy to collaborate with the the library board. Okay, but I guess my question to you then is, what is collaboration? Because well, we were thinking primarily in terms of you know supporting you financially, supporting the scholarship financially. Um, I don't know anything about how you make the decisions on awarding the scholarship. I'm primarily here to get information to take back to my board. Okay, great. Um, well, Mary, Mary, why don't you? Um, jump in here because you've been chair for the last few years the, the process that well, we, we have um we contact the high school we tell them that it's available we have a um, application form for anyone who's interested we have a date that they have to hand in the application completed um and it includes everything you can think of grades references mm -hmm. you know um out mm -hmm. extracurricular activities and every year you just think, oh my God, I wish we could give it to everybody because yeah. the mm -hmm. kids are so, they're so enthusiastic. It's a thousand dollars, Janice, that we usually do. Okay. And That's what um, I thought. then we get together um, as a, our big group of three people or whatever we had. <laughs> and we read everything and we, um, everyone has an evaluation sheet and then we discuss whom we think the winner is, and it's been great. And then um, one of us goes to the um, at the award night that they have mm -hmm. for, the, for the kids. It's just an old fashioned, wonderful thing for the town. Yes. To do. But I understand the problem with money and the budgets and everything. So whatever we decide, but it's very beneficial and You'd be surprised what kids write for a thousand dollars, you know, which is yeah. nothing today for college. Right. I mean, it's outrageously expensive. Right. So, Mary, did I leave anything out? Oh, I think that was good, Mary. Thank you. Thank but you. I think some question has um, arisen the last few years, either from us as a committee or from other board members, um, and also I know Megan has has questioned some of it. The the criteria mm -hmm. um, we feel that some of us feel anyway that maybe the criteria is too limited um that maybe it should be more library focused um no it, it should be more limited you mean it should uh, be yeah, yeah i guess i'm sorry yeah backwards volunteered um, or somebody who has some connection just like um i know my son won the knights of columbus award once because my father was very involved so somebody who's involved more than just a person from bethel is that what you're saying uh -huh. 
So I, I have the mission statement in front of me and it okay. says the library board of director scholarship is granted to a high school senior who is a resident of the town of Bethel, Connecticut and who plans to attend an accredited degree granting institution. The scholarship is awarded to a deserving student who has demonstrated a high degree of academic achievement, extracurricular activities, community services, and financial need. That's great. So we have four criteria. Yes. What was the third one? Academics, extracurricular, then I got community financial. activities. Community yeah. activities. Yeah, that's you can't and financial that. need. And and Jan, we had an, an application form uh, that yeah. we had put together, and we used um, percentages to grade them. Um, uh, for instance, academic achievement was thirty points, extracurricular yeah, right. activity was twenty, uh, community volunteer was twenty, financial need was twenty. So we tried to give them a numerical value, yeah, each of us right. individually, and right. then we would get together and see who had the biggest scores, type of thing. Um, I have to step away for one second. I'm sorry, because okay. I'm at work. Okay, okay Robin. <laughs> <laughs> um, we also had them write an essay, and we changed that a few years ago. The essay, um, it used to be, correct me if I'm wrong, but what used to be on anything? Um, no, and now what is the essence? I'm trying to find my notes. I could go find mine. Um, I brought it with me, so. I think now we ask them to write why we should give the award to them. Right. And we well, found we that was, that we was talk, Yeah, we had talked some about get, giving points if you, like if they'd volunteered at the library or if they had done, I don't know, we never did do much with that but no we didn't do anything we didn't change the process at all but i think that that's something we're charged with right now that if we're going to do it should we make changes besides right but that would definitely limit the number of yes it would how many students in high school volunteer at the library anyone i have no well, idea. well not right now because there's no volunteers no. right well i mean usually well yeah. i think one person let we gave them a few extra points maybe if they we had someone last year that had last year of, that um, yeah had volunteered. Yeah. Well, I yeah. Yeah. So the let's put that on great. as an extra. In other words, they had ten points if they volunteered at the library or something. Yeah. No, yeah. Megan just wondered if there was some way we could make it more library based rather than so general. Yeah. Well, with our academic extracurricular community activity, we could say ten points more for the library community. I don't know. I mean, there's some way we could put it in the criteria, don't you think? Yeah. Um, Do you want to limit it just to library volunteers? Well, I don't think we'd get any any applicants. No, that's, no. that's way too narrow. Way yeah. too narrow. Yeah. No. yeah. Right. But we should be able to add something to our um, criteria that we have, don't you think? Either as extra, uh, well, communicating community activity. Yeah, maybe we could broaden that to say, you know, um, library. Library. Yeah. right now, I, I think that that would probably be, and there would be, we'd have to publicize that, I would think in advance to, to, oh, uh, yeah, we would, yeah, you know, that might bring in a few more volunteers. Yeah, <laughs> that would be community activity focused on the library, something like that. Or even maybe even narrowing it. I mean, maybe if you were looking for volunteers in the bookseller or I don't know, would be something like that, that we could add to the list of things that, you know, are considered community service. I, well, I think if we participate, we would like that. And we have had kids, you know, come down and work mm -hmm. for us too. So that would be, that would be I think good yeah well i, I don't know i, I had think it'd be good that. too i think we could fit it in there if we think about it what about community activity at the library make that all just library is that too much i don't know maybe uh, maybe we can ask megan to um give us her thoughts on that I'm thinking you already have that, um, the young man going for his Eagle Scout. 
badge who did yeah. the story walk. Correct. Correct. Oh yeah. I yeah. mean he'd he'd be a have a real advantage, yeah. Right, right. But we have to have it written down someplace. Yes, yeah, that would be part of his community service. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. Would be listed. Yeah, yeah, that would be. Right. Yeah. Right. Well, there is a place in community service at the end that would say other, right? But I didn't community they have a list of activities. Yeah. Yeah. And then yeah. there's a place that says other activities where somebody like the Eagle Scout. Right. But but I think we're kind of jumping the gun because I think we need to get back to the board with with recommendations on whether why we should do the scholarship or why we should not do the scholarship because otherwise we really have 12 opinions right i mean certainly yeah. a, a, a pro to continue doing the scholarship is with the support of the friends of the library it takes the financial burden off of us because i could see us donating half that would be very generous i mean you yeah. really think that that's well you know we have a lot of money but megan warned me She's going to use it. So <laughs> <laughs> she has her eye on some of it. <laughs> but I think that, um, you know, we could certainly contribute a, a nice, you know, chunk of change there. And, um, you know, we're, we're going to continue having sales and all of those things once we get the bookseller opened. So we will have some sort of income coming in. So should we make it part of the criteria of the scholarship that what you wrote in the beginning, the, what you've read, Mary, and say something about someone who's contributed to the library in that? So the, and when they look at the scholarships, they know that that's part of it. They don't wait till the end. Um, when you, were, you read that, and I don't have it. Yeah, we have academic achievement, extracurricular activities. Um, community volunteer activities. And under that is Bethel Public Library volunteer. It's already under community. Okay. Oh, okay. Yes. Okay. It is there, yeah. <laughs> we tell the guidance counselors to say that would be a big extra mm -hmm. if they were a volunteer at the library. I don't know. Anyone have an opinion about that? And then some years we've given, actually given two scholarships. <laughs> yeah, we have. When we haven't been able to make a determination, we've gone to the board and asked them to yeah. allow us to give two, two scholarships. Well, at that time, we had a little um, more money and we were a little more flush to be able to be able to do that, right? Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. Well, does Mike have an opinion about this as far as the budget goes? I, no, actually, my feeling from talking with her was that with the scholarship that she's sort of... Um, somewhere in the middle, like if we do it fine, if we don't do it fine. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, I always thought it was kind of a nice public, you know, something to show the public that the library is, but um, I don't know. Well, so I think it's, it's not gonna be, I, I don't think it's- 500 and we have 5,000, that'd give us 10 years. <laughs> then we'll all be in the cemetery. <laughs> Hey, not all of us speakers. No, though. okay, I mean, Rob. I'm not planning on it. <laughs> I know none of us want to be there, but no, I'm on. just kidding. You know that. <laughs> um, I have an opinion. Um, I, I mean, as far as whether we should continue it or not continue it, I mean, it might be an unfavorable opinion, but I think unless we're going to offer more money for a scholarship it's silly to continue it. I feel like a thousand dollars, I mean, as the mother of a senior in high school, <laughs> it's not yeah. worth the work of all the application process and everything for a thousand dollars. And I don't think, I mean, I don't know that it shows something so great in the community for just a thousand dollars. As Mary said, it's, it's not money in today's day and age. So I almost feel like, and now if we're gonna have help from the friends, like maybe we need to up the scholarship if we're gonna continue it to really make it something a little more worthwhile. Like the Knights of Columbus scholarship you mentioned, 
they give they give that to the same kid for all four, four years, years in a row. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I'm yeah. not saying we do that, but I'm just saying that a thousand dollars in the scheme of four years of college is not that much money. So, I mean, that's just my opinion. If we don't, no, but that's but Robin. Well, that's good to hear. No, yeah. it is, yeah. and I I'm on the um, scholarship committee for the women's club in Danbury too, and I just finished. We uh, they give it to every school, Danbury High, Abbott Tech, and I do Immaculate, and we only had eight kids. And they had to do a lot of work for that thousand dollars, but um, yeah. the cost of college is outrageous. Right. So a thousand dollars, even at WestCon, is not that much money. So no, it's not. For it's a kid not. living at home and going to WestCon. No, I agree so, with you. That's correct. That's a good. So, so Robin, I, mean, I, I think that's the base of, of the arguments about whether we should continue the scholarship mm -hmm. or not. Um, I totally agree with you. I mean, it's. You know, if I had a kid filling out, you know, reams and reams of paper, then you would go with the ones that were a lot more or whatever. Right. Um, so perhaps if we're going to consider, so I, my feeling is this, if we want to continue doing it, I think we need to make it a larger scholarship. If we don't want to spend that kind of money and don't want to raise that kind of money, then maybe there's another way within the community we get a thousand dollars to kids in the community in other ways, you know, like, if, I, I mean, I'm just off the top of my head, like maybe we give a laptop to five kids going off to college or whatever, like just something else that shows our, our good faith in the community without um, you know, where it might really make some sort of difference. I, I don't know. I'm just thinking of other ways to get a, a message out there. That is a good idea or that is, you know what? I lost my meeting. Did you, anybody else? No, no we're here. I don't know what happened. I mean, I have joined the meeting sign up. We can hear you. I'm doing that too, but it stopped. I don't know what I did. That's your Wi-Fi. Mine's been fine. Full disk access came up from WebRoot, whatever that is. I don't. Sorry, I didn't so, mean. To so, Robin, to to go along with with your views, um, I think I have a problem with increasing giving money away when we work so hard to get money for our library itself, and when right. we beg for our budget to not be touched, and when we beg for people to give us money. And then we turn around and we have more money to give away. I, I, I just, yeah. I, I, I just I have a problem with it. Our job is not to give away money. Right. And our, our board is not going to go for more money. I, you well, know, 500 is a lot. Maybe we offer different programming for like, I don't know, just a thought, like increased programming for high schoolers. Like maybe we have more like a, we pay to have an expert come in who talks to, you know, seniors and juniors about college loans and grants and that's a good you know, idea. Scholarships, like another way to use some of that money. It doesn't have to be a thousand dollars, but something that can benefit the community more as a whole instead of one individual, where we just to grieve that a thousand dollars isn't that much of a benefit to one individual. I like your ideas. I have a, I have a senior in high school. <laughs> <laughs> that helps, right? It's it's taking so bad. Exactly there, so, you know, whatever. And I think what you're saying are things that my board would, would like too. Yeah. There's something, and then we're getting our message out to the community and in a, in a bigger way, you know, yes. we can, I mean, I don't know, just, a, it's just my thought. It is a good thought. It is. One of the things that I've been concerned about with the friends is that, um, and I've talked to Megan about the concept of marketing, the friends and marketing the library. And I think that we have this could have a bigger important role in the community there's a lot going on the library should be the center 
and source of a lot of information. Right. And I think having our name associated with something like that is, is very helpful. Right, and as for marketing, if we're doing something, like if we do this, when we do the scholarship, we send something to the guidance counselors and maybe it goes in the school newsletter. But if we do yeah. right. one or two or three like expos of some type for seniors, that would go in the newsletter three times mentioning you know, the friends and the library and what we're doing for the right. community. There is, so, there is things like in now, there is in, this, in the newsletter that goes home to the kid that you probably get that was mentioning the library and, and getting books, you know, to uh, different- Right, like the bag of people. books and such, yeah. Yeah, the bag of books or whatever it is. Yeah, yeah. That, was, that, is, that is listed in that newsletter that goes out. Right. Uh, I don't know, monthly or what? I'm not sure exactly what it is. But we had the same, pro I'm on the alumni, the board um, for the alumni association, for Bethel High School's alumni association. And we were down, having the same problem. We were down to like, we weren't going to be able to give two scholarships. We were only going to be able to give one. We were down to like that. And then we started, um, adding to the newsletter, which goes out twice a year, we added a place where you could give money in memory of a certain alumni. Oh, that's nice. And we are up, I mean, we are, I don't know how much money there is, but we're going to this year be able to give three $1,500 scholarships. Wow, that's great. So Judy, um, didn't you have one, uh, some, a real big, big donation? Yes, we had one person who gave $10,000. I mean, oh, that, wow. that makes, that, that's a lot. That helped. Yeah. And then there have been, <laughs> right. but there have been quite a few people who have given money in honor uh, or in memory of either one. You could do it in honor of someone who's still alive or, or in memory of someone who's passed on who went to Bethel High School. Mm -hmm. There's been a lot of people who've given like $500 or 250 or whatever. Mm -hmm. It was a great, um, like once that month, that uh, little thing that went into the newsletter, you know, um, money sort of kept, um, has come in. And even if it's like somebody, like Dr. Valpentesta, for example, money was given to in the honor of him, him uh, in memory of him and it also went to the library board and right i mean to the library and also to the friends right people right were able to give so i don't know if that's i don't know if that's something that you could use for the scholarship like well, we that, did, that's something know. that the development committee should talk about when we meet which we're going to meet and um, you know, as one option for raising money, because that should be out there more that right. people could get money. Right, money in other, yeah, in, in memory. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. yeah, to be specific, the money that came to the friends was really designated for the library. There was an error in some of the information right. that was put out. So all the yeah, money I saw, that I, got went to oh, it, it the library. Go, it went to the library, yeah. right. Okay, because I was yeah. confused about that because I wanted oh, to give some money and I wound up giving it to the friends, but I guess it wound up going to the library. Yeah, it all went to the library. Okay, well, you know, I mean, I don't know how people would feel about that being used for scholarship, but I don't know. So, uh, Robin, just uh, um, moving on with your development, uh, committee, do you see the development committee taking on uh, a commitment to raise money for a scholarship? Or do you see it? I like the idea of the other things that you mentioned of putting the money back into programming and things within the library. I like that better too. I mean, yeah, I guess the development committee would have to meet and talk about it. But um, I think as of, I mean, I think that we've always, the development committee has always just said that we're raising money sort of as a blanket amount of money for the library and its, and its, you know, mission. I don't think it's earmarked, say, for scholarships or for, you know, anything in, anything specific. Mm -hmm. But I do like 
the idea of using the money that is raised to, you know, benefit the community. I think that people are more likely to give money and want to participate in our fundraising events if they can see what exactly is where the money for. is going. Yeah, I think they yeah. want something tangible, right? right. Yes, exactly. Right. Yeah. Well, for many well, years, you, we didn't have that. But now I think with Megan, we, we have more of a, um, a tangible, you know, yeah. But could you like take that, let's say that $5,000 that we have in the scholarship fund now and repurpose it for using it for, I mean, there'd have to be, I would think there would have to be, you know, a, a meeting or, you know, people would have to have some time to think about it, I guess. I don't know. But to purpose it for, instead of scholarship, put it for, I don't know, the name of whatever you've come up with or whatever. Um, now, for programming or for um, whatever you, you think that, like a grant maybe, I don't know. I, I mean, I think it would be great to use it in for some sort of programming. Like if we wanted to eliminate it as a scholarship, maybe we can earmark that money for programming that will benefit uh, you know, high schoolers, because as it is now, the library has fabulous programming for children and for middle schoolers, but maybe we need something more geared towards high schoolers going to college or whatever. But would that, my question about that though is, would that fall on the scholarship committee or would that now be something that would fall on the library staff? I think the whole, yeah, the whole, I would think the whole light would. I don't know, and Mary, what do you think? Uh, well, library. I think if we're not going to offer a, a scholarship per se, then the scholarship committee will be dissolved. Right, right. and then those people could have- And the effort them. will be put into the development committee. That's what I was looking for, you just said. <laughs> Janice, what do you think about the friends? Do you think they would like that idea better? If, yeah. I, if the friends were going to donate to, um, programming or whatever we're going to call it, would they be enthusiastic about that, you think? Well, it would be very easy because we, we do have, our money yeah. is used for programming already. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I, I just like the idea of doing something very specifically for, you know, for school. Kids. For this is my only kid going to college, kids going into, uh, right. okay. Whatever. That's gotten much more important. I think it's a very daunting process now. Like it's always been yeah. a daunting process to have kids applying to college, but I think even now it's like even more daunting for some reason because it's so expensive. Yeah. And um, I mean, I know that the high school does. They have one meeting basically for parents of seniors to go over you know information for applying to colleges but i don't know that one meeting is enough for parents to feel comfortable with this process like for me the whole processing as a parent process as a parent of a senior is incredibly daunting and when my senior told me he was going to take a gap year because he wants to play his sport in college and he needs to play it more to get stronger and better before applying to college. And then he'll probably be scouted for college instead of applying. Like for me, that's like a, a wow <laughs> moment. <Yeah. laughs> like, yeah. I don't have to go through any of that other stuff. Well, I mean, until my second child, but <laughs> I, I think for, for parents, the whole process. So I, I think, I mean, as someone in that exact demographic when you're talking about scholarships I think there are better ways like the money is like not the biggest problem like if you're applying for you know a hundred thousand dollars in loans to put your kid through college what's another thousand dollars it's nothing when you but it's more the the whole process where do you where do you go to apply for loans you know what's the best way to get a loan is it you know, 
a mortgage on your house? Is it student loans? You know, these are the kinds of things that I think an expert in that field would really help the community and with those decisions. So I just, and listening to you, Robin, just putting words down, okay? What I heard was that you're suggesting or it's coming out of the conversation that we offer programming for high school specific for higher education. Does that make sense? Yeah. Because that's broad. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So ways Actually. of helping kids be able to have some form of higher education. Right. Right. Yeah, I think that that's a, a good. Would this be something that you could add? This would be like the seed money, the, the $5,000 that if we dissolve the scholarship committee and the scholarship, would that be something that would be used as seed money and that maybe the development committee would be able to raise more money if that's something that? Um, I, I like that idea, Judy. I like the idea of giving the, the money over to the development committee and let them see where the need is and, and how to grow that money. Right. Because it would be the same problem. We, it, you know, it would be gone maybe in a year or two because $5,000 doesn't go that far either anymore. No. But it wouldn't be an application form. It would be programming of some sort some that sort. would be open to the public. That would help everybody. I mean, that, that would help yeah. teenagers in particular yeah. who are and going on to higher education. Higher right? because, education. Or yeah. even, yeah, it could have to be trade. Career. It could be anything. It yeah, could be anything. not necessarily yeah. college, but it could be more like it could be more like, kind of like a, navigation after high school. Yeah, like next steps, you know, it doesn't even have yeah. to be higher education, but yeah. next step, what are the next steps after high school for? Yeah, that be, I like that idea. That's yeah. Fun. So that people don't feel left out if they don't plan on college. They're looking for right, a career could, or vocation. And it, and or, it could be everything from informational meetings about scholarships and grants and things that are out there for people going to college. And it could be, uh -huh. you know, how do you channel your child's energy to figure out what it is they, they want to do? Yeah. yeah, that's yeah. a good point too. Being an 18 year old, what they want to do for the rest of their life is a pretty <laughs> crazy idea. And opinion. there's so many choices out there today. You know, so I don't know. I mean, yeah, I think something broad yeah. uh, mm -hmm. is a good idea because, and I we think- We hit Robin at the right time. <laughs> I'm so glad you're on this committee, Robin. We're all past in our lives. Well, I do fit the demographic at least for a few years, but then after that, we'll see. But I mean, so, so just a little this, background, um, Jan, just so that you hear this too. Um, I, I know I've been around way too long, but we had years that, that people did not use the money as we thought they were going to. I mean, we oh, had really? one person that ended up not going to school. Mm -hmm. oh, uh, I remember that one. Uh, yeah. There are no strings attached once they get the money. Um, yeah. And that's another thing to, to think about. I mean, you can't, you know, we talked about the money should go directly to the school. Maybe yeah, the money said, should send the money to the, to the school. Yeah. And then we decided that it's really not fair. If you believe in the person, you hand them the money and, and mm. the choice is theirs. Um, but we would have a little more control if it was programming. Right. And like you said, we could dissolve this committee and then the programming staff at the library who really knows programming can take that part over and then come to the development committee for the funding and then have more people on the development committee, which has always been sort of the hardest yeah. committee to get people to commit I to. Right. And it would encourage more collaboration with the people at the high school, too. Yeah. Right. Yeah, that's true. And I think we're in a different place with Megan because I think she has the community support and the community relationships that we never had in the past. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's also a different time. It is. It is so right. different. It is. Mm -hmm. When the scholarship was a big thing and a big honor, now it's not enough. Um, it impacts one person at a time. 
one family to have something that impacts a substantial number of people, I think is makes another kind of a statement. Yeah, that is there. That is the there. community instead of, you know, just yeah, that's Robin, you have a lot of good ideas for us. Yeah. Oh, thank you. <laughs> now are we is this something that we want to bring to the whole board? Yes, I think we have to. It has to be a board decision. Okay. You can't just dissolve a committee or, or decide not to do a scholarship. It has to be a board decision. Right. right. The board right. voted to not do it this year. Right. And are asking us to come back with suggestions for the right. future. So we need to, it sounds like we're kind of all on the same page. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, so uh, with it, I, I know that as chairman, I would need to, um, you know, present this, I guess. But do I have all the, you know, the backing of it in case I can't? Oh yeah, I think know how to do it, <laughs> or you know that Robin would be able put to put Robin on board. She's really got it. She's thought about it a lot. <laughs> no, I, mean, right. I, I have to think more too. And well, I, I mean, I think that, you I think you're right. It, it has yeah. to be a whole decision, you know, from the yeah. whole the whole scholarship committee has to come to some consensus, I guess. So something. if it's a committee recommendation to dissolve. The scholarship committee, is that what we're saying? Yeah, that's a good word, dissolve. <laughs> or to, yeah. to redirect the scholarship redirect money? Redirect to the development committee. Is that what we're asking, Robin, do you think? Yeah, how are Actually, we gonna... I like that, I like that. Because you're in the gonna... development committee? I think we really want to redirect it to the programming staff at the library. Oh, okay. I don't know how well that will go down, but I think that we want, I mean, I I would believe that the programming, the, whoever does programming at the library is gonna be the one that has the expertise in what is needed. And, or if they're, you know, for community outreach, or if they don't know, then they should be the ones to reach out to like the guidance counselors at the high school and yeah. say, hey, what do you recommend? You know, what would you like to see yeah, at the library that's good. Yeah. that would benefit your students, right? Because, I mean, we're on the, the development committee's main mission is to make money for the, the library to yeah. do its job as best as possible. And I think that, uh, I mean, I'm no expert in this. If I could say what I would like to see, but I wouldn't know who the heck to call to make that happen. I think that someone would need to reach out to- uh -huh. That maybe the library is- uh, Well, haven't they done some of that outreach or whatever? Excuse yeah, I think they've been very good with outreach, but- yeah. um, Well, I don't know if, if is there, there's, is there a committee? There's no, not really a, a committee. I don't know. No. We don't have anything that, okay. I mean, I don't know. I mean, I don't know how well received that will be. And I don't, I don't want to say like dissolve the com this committee without giving them some more answers because I don't want it to look like we're just trying to get out of doing our our yeah. job here. Right. Because that's, well, that's what we're looking for today to have the pros and cons of of, of convincing them of one or way or the other, yeah. like, you know, listing the facts, you know. Listening, and listening to see if they have any other suggestions that. So well, I Tom, think we need to have a plan because if we go in, it's gonna be just 12 different opinions, just like today. Okay. And I think as a committee, we need to make a recommendation. I, I'm curious to ask Tom since he just popped back on, but I mean, since you're well, Megan is library, going to read this, watch this recording, so she'll yeah. have. But who handles the programming in the live, like, for the library? So Amy Davenport's now handling all of our um, programming. She oversees and coordinates with Megan Amber um, for you know children's programming. Amy's doing. Uh, focusing on mostly bringing in adult programming. So I think this falls, I mean, uh, either way, it falls into her wheelhouse. Um, we've done talks about, um, you know, funding 
for college, how to, you know, find grants, the best way to go about paying for what has become, uh, uh, as, as you've stated, a, a very expensive proposition. And, you know, so I, I understand the point of, you know, is a thousand dollars really um, worth, worth, worth the effort? Um, uh, but at the same time, I mean, I'll, I'll tell you the, one of the ones that we've had come in in the past, um, obviously not recently, um, they did it for free um, because they themselves were a for-profit company. So when, you know, they'd come in, they'd do the talk and um, then at the end they would um, offer their services. Uh, we had another woman from a financial institution and she would talk about, you know, saving for college, everything from starting early with a 529 to, you know, okay, now the, the kid's 16, what do we do? Um, you know, uh, uh, my, my concern with it is if you've got $5,000, how long does that last us going forward, right? I mean, so if we start bringing in, like I say, most of those individuals have been, um, have either been free or at, at best we're looking at maybe a hundred dollars. Um, so you could get a lot of those programs out of, out of the $5,000. Um, so. Plus what the friends can contribute to. You know, yeah. um, or are there other... is the thousand dollars still a nice thing to get? Um, you know that goes towards books or something like that. Well, I don't think we're in any position to increase the amount if we were going to go back and talk about a scholarship. I'm um, realistically. I, I mean, I think what I'm hearing is a thousand dollars is hardly anything, but I don't see us to be in a position to make it two thousand or three thousand. I'm not suggesting that. Uh, I mean, I got a $500 scholarship uh, for my master's and I was thankful to get it because it was a little bit towards it. Helps. Towards it. Now, you know, Robin, I understand your point completely though. I mean, in the grand scheme of things, was that 500 really anything? You know, for the semester, fine. It was kind of nice and it paid for the books, but, uh, you know, in the long run, you know, what, I, I don't even remember what it was, $10,000 a semester or something like that, you know, it's it's a bit of a drop in the bucket. Um, you know, and this is all certainly your guys' uh, um, decisions. Uh, but we're also talking about a kid starting off with four years of higher education, course, which is different than going for a master's degree so i think you know in that when you put it in that context it's even less yes and you so you mentioned that the people you've had come in for programming for that for what we're talking about have mm -hmm. done it a lot of them pro bono because they have for-profit businesses but Correct. i'm wondering if we could attract people that aren't looking to then be hired by these parents because that's where you know again it's only benefiting like truly benefiting the people that can spend the extra money and take on these advisors for their children so maybe if there are people that are willing to do it for say five hundred dollars or something to come in maybe they're not looking for clients out of it but this is just their expertise that they're willing to share like I don't know. I, I have no idea. No idea. Just sort of speaking what I'm thinking. Um, I, I, you know, uh, I couldn't say whether or not that person exists. Uh, it seems to me like it would be a more limited pool of attendees then because it would have to be, you know, this individual would be doing it on uh, a, a sort of individualized basis. So you know, Robin, you'd come in and they'd talk to you about what you have and, and all. So to do it more generally, because that's, you know, what we're getting right now is the general. Well, you know, okay, if the kids are six, start a 529 for them, 
start putting, you know, 500 a year into it, whatever like that. Um, if the kid's 16, well, then you're looking at, at a very different financial situation. Um, and, and that's the kind of thing that we're getting, you know, uh, for, um, for $500 a, a person uh, or, or for the presentation, um, I think what we'd be looking at would be more individualized tailored plans. Um, at least that's what I'm thinking as a program in my head, but you know, then you'd only be serving maybe, I, I couldn't see certainly more than 20 people getting that kind of treatment. Right. Um, you know. I mean, in my head, I still think 20 people is better than one person getting a scholarship, sure. but that's just, you know, again, just where I come from. But yeah. Well, you're in a, you know, you're, you're where, you know, you've got people who are going off to higher education at some point. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so, and so you you really are the person on this committee that, you know, is, and Tom are the ones that have kids that are younger and or ready to, almost ready to leave the nest, so. Robin, does the high school still do, now I'm really dating myself, like um, career day, do they have people that come in and talk about different professions? Um, I don't know if they do that at the high school. I know they do that at the middle school because uh -huh. I've been called to do it. Many years I've done it, gone, gone into the middle school. It's done on a middle school level? I think they do it on, at Johnson School and then again in the middle school. I've never been asked to do it at the high school, so I'm not quite sure if it's done at the high school. I, I think there must be some sort of career day, but I'm not sure they're reaching out to the local community. But again, the last two years, they haven't done anything. So I can't really remember because you know, that would have been Bryce's freshman and sophomore year. I, right. Well, everything is pandemic affected. There's no doubt about it. Yeah. I, I was just trying them. to figure if there was some way we could do, I, I wrote down to redirect the scholarship funds to promote community outreach for continued education. But that's really broad. So we really need some examples if we want to sell it. I think what you're saying is let the library staff decide on pro what programs to do? I mean, I think in conjunction with the schools, right? Like with the guidance counselors maybe, but I don't, I don't think we're, I don't know that we're qualified to do that. We're not. No, <laughs> I'm not. Even me who is in the thick of it, I don't feel qualified to do no, um, my son says not that he knows of as far as career day at the high school mm -hmm. so that's the answer i got to that what if we use the money to bring in prominent people i'm not i'm not politics type of thing but prominent businessmen or people within the community to speak although maybe they would do it for nothing too right i, I don't know and would we be able to draw that? Would, would they come? Would they come? Where are you imagining them coming? To the library to speak or to the schools? Or We could do it anywhere, Mary. If the crowd was well, big I mean, enough, if they the high it. school auditorium or, you know. Yeah. It certainly and doesn't have to be by, within the library. No, I, by I, the I, Bethel Library or by the friends of the library or together. Yeah, it would be sponsored by the by the yeah. library with the okay. friends and, and the, the and library the board, board of directors, which board is directors, quite nice. Right. Yeah. Which would give yeah, which would yeah, that's true. That would look good in some ways. I think it would maybe be helpful to have our, you know, have that information. Because I don't see there's anything I don't know about the night of the of the scholarship when you give when the, I I remember I went and gave it an immaculate once, and um, you just get up and you know say that this is given by such and such and such group, but that's not you know it's not like uh, on a piece of paper that you or on a website or something that you would go on to and say okay this is what 
um, we're, we're, we're sponsoring this program. I don't know. Right, there's no PR with that is what you're no. saying. It, right, right, right. That's right. what I'm looking for. Right. Or not very much PR, but there would be if you sponsored these events or these programs. With everything's online today. Yeah. And there are programs, aren't there things that the, the high school itself does, like the superintendent or whatever, she does something. I don't think she yeah. does anything, but I know there was um, one, one meeting for parents. I wasn't able to attend it, but my husband did. I don't remember why I wasn't, but I wasn't. <laughs> and he attended it and I don't I don't know how helpful it was or not but yeah I don't know <laughs> yes they do very little though very yeah. little but I know they do programs for like younger kids going into school into kindergarten or people going into I don't know I just I haven't been to any of them but I see them on that so then there, there possibly could be a need for this? Is that what you're saying? Could be. I think there could be a need. Yeah. I mean, even if the high school does one, you know, like I said, I wasn't able to attend it. It, it could have been because I had a library board meeting. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm not, I'm not that busy a person, but um, it could have been... You know, I mean, and what if you're a single parent and you can't attend that one meeting? So, you know, I, again, I, I don't really know the answer. Things be know done that. online? I don't know. I just know the whole process is crazy daunting. Mm -hmm. So there's got to be a way to make parents and kids feel a little more comfortable with the whole process. And if I only say, you know, I only say it because we're talking about something in lieu of a college scholarship, which is also to make, you know, the cost of college less daunting. So I, that's kind of where. Well, now, now is it? Yeah, is it? Is it the uh, counselors at the high school that guide the kids into different? No, none of that going on, huh? I really think the guidance counselor's job at the high school is to make sure the kids get the classes they need, the credits they need to graduate. They're not really guiding them into a future career, you know, like, yeah, like they used to try. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I, I just think that that's not what they're doing. I mean, and yet, I mean, my son's guidance counselor is fantastic. So I can't, say that they don't work hard uh -huh. or don't do a good job. I just, it's mostly left to the kids to, you know, think about what they want to do, where they want to go, research the different colleges, you know. And then go out and visit and do all that, yeah. Yeah, and this year there was no visiting, so that's, you know, yet another problem. But, yeah. I mean, you know, years and years ago, I'm talking a long time ago, there was like this book called like, What Color Is Your Parachute? Do you know that? Book? Yeah. It's like supposed to like guide people into their career choice. So, you know, I'm kind of thinking maybe there's like a, what color is your parachute to help people, you know, not just guide their career choice, but that's part of it. Um, but where do you want to go? How are you going to do it? How do you make all that happen? I mean, maybe it's too personal for a, a program. I don't, I don't know. I don't think so. I, I just I feel sounds great. the scholarship. Alvin, guess who's going to give the program? Not me. <laughs> <I know>. <laughs> <laughs> Is it you, Mary? Mary? Because that was yeah. sounds great. <laughs> I'm just teasing. <laughs> <laughs> my program of um um i don't know it's just daunting <laughs> I don't, Tom, I don't what do, you think? do you have any ideas um i'm not really sure that i i get a say in any of this uh no i just wondered no, just your opinion on. off the record <laughs> uh -oh, <pause laughs> the recording um yeah uh, <laughs> 
I, I think it's, I think that it's always worthwhile to think up new ideas and, and to think outside the box and, and to consider, is this the best use of, of the money? Right. Yeah. I mean, you know, okay. So you, you gave the example of a student who, who won the scholarship and then, oh, they ended up not going to college. <laughs> thousand yeah. dollars for but hey good on them um maybe they used it towards a, a a trade school or something who who knows um the so is is our impact going to be more by paying for programming hosting career fairs hosting you know introductions to um maybe non-degree uh opportunities or you know helping people to, you know, as you say, uh, what color of your, is your parachute is still a book and we get a new copy in I think, every other year. So in case you want to come check it out, we got it. Um, I think the new one just came in. Um, so is that a better use of the funds? You know, instead of $1,000 a year to one person, $1,000 to help even say 20 people or you know, 50 people to find what it is that they want to do. I mean, I know for myself, um, what I went to college for originally isn't what I'm doing now. So, uh, you know, does anyone at 18 really know what they want to do? Um, and, you know, but at least being guided into a career that maybe could morph into where you want to be. So how to how to plan for that and how to be where that is, and could a could that thousand dollars or even maybe even just five hundred be better spent um, to benefit a larger group? Sure. Um, and do I think that's a bad idea? No. Um, I, I I think um, these are all worthwhile things to explore. Um, and, you know, the idea of something like a career fair or or the individualized um, uh, um, uh, funding plan, something like that, whatever you want to call that. Uh, those are all valid ideas. Um, you know, if we can help two people for the thousand dollars instead of just one person, um, is, is that worth it? And you know, do you direct them into something more worthwhile in their life? Um, yeah. Um, it's worth looking into and considering, um, you know, that being said, you know, a thousand dollars towards college is still a thousand dollars that, you know, um, is a little less that has to be taken out in loans. You know, is it, like I say, in the grand scheme of things, um, just a drop in the bucket? I, I mean, certainly depending upon where you go, I mean, you know, you go to Westcon or something like that. I don't know what a college credit costs these days, but you know, a thousand dollars is a little more meaningful to say Western than to say, you know, Harvard or something like that. Certainly, um, so you know, there, there's that. Uh, I don't know. Um, you know, ultimately, guys, it's you know, it's up to you. Um, but it never hurts to take in these new considerations and see if if we couldn't get more uh, uh, more bang for our buck. <laughs> so I have another quick thought that thinking of what Tom's saying and, and that we have to go to the whole board with this idea. So uh, Judy, you're the head of this committee, right? Right. Would it make sense for you to say call up the high school and see if you can get the ear of one of the guidance counselors and kind of float the idea by a guidance counselor like what do you think yeah that's kids in high school need and how could the library benefit these kids because then we could have we could be coming to the board with a more tangible thought process based in some sort of reality. I don't know, maybe you don't want to do that. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, I, I guess if I really understand the whole thing, 
Yes, I could. I mean, you, you were a teacher, correct? I was, yes. <laughs> Not high school? No. No. Elementary. Okay. I'm thinking too about how can we support kids? Uh, you know, and I think about the scholarship thing. I didn't think about it until Tom was talking. Um, we need to be able to support kids who are not only going to, to college, but into the trades or into the arts. And I think by doing a scholarship at this point, it really limits the, the field of kids who feel that they can you know, be looked at. Can we hear you? I can't hear anybody. Can you oh. hear? No. I'm sorry. I was talking to my daughter. If you thought I was talking. Oh, to I thought you were talking. She <laughs> <laughs> walked in and asked me a question, and I muted myself. I apologize. Oh. <laughs> sorry. So, when is the next meeting? Because this week they're off, right? The school yeah. is off. Yeah. School is off. So our our board meeting is the 26th. So that would give all next week to reach out to the schools. Now, who is your, who, who is your counselor? Who's the, your son's counselor? You said was who? I, the only one I know a little bit is Corinne, Corinne Corridi or whatever her name is. I think her name is, I'd have to look it up to get the exact name, but it's like, D. Bernardi or something like that. No. I can look it up because she's fantastic, and you could you could definitely use um, my name or my son's name because I use my maiden name, so my family all has a different last name, so they may not know me. <laughs> <laughs> but if you want, I can get um, the name of one of the guidance counselors for you. Okay. And then I can give you my son's name because I know she's, um, I know she likes him. So that maybe it'll help. <laughs> and that's that, what I would ask is basically is if there was, if we have X number, or we have trying to decide whether we should continue to give the scholarship and what else could we use that money for? Is that the basic yeah, I mean, idea? Is there some things that you think parents and kids who are in high school might need instead of just giving a $1,000 scholarship. Yeah, like can the library provide, are there resources that the library could provide to yeah. parents and students that would benefit them for their future that we're not doing, you know, uh -huh. I think that would be a, an interesting idea. I mean, I just to throw a crazy monkey wrench in the whole thing, but Tom mentioned, you know, getting a $500 scholarship and using it for books. Mm -hmm. So does like Westcon have a library program, like a major in library sciences? Library science? No. Uh, Southern is the only school in Connecticut that offers um, a master's or actually they even offer an undergrad in library science. Um, I just posted a link in the chat to the, uh, the town's uh, link for um, all their school counselors. Um, the high school counselors are at the bottom. Um, okay, so I can tell you the name of the one that- yeah, the Benedetto, have. I think is the closest to yours. There's Benedetto, a, you know, Benedetto. Benedetto. Yeah, but there's yep, a- that's Leon, right. Leanne Fusilo is the uh, department chair. So, um, but her information's on the link there. So, um, yeah. So, I mean, right, is that the question? Does, since we're a library board, should you not be supporting library services or, 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 or degrees in, say, English over, say, degrees in, you know, architecture, right? But then again, the library supports 
all yeah. education mm -hmm. with our collection. Yeah. So by narrowing it down to just say studying library science, are we doing ourselves a disservice because I mean, the library itself encourages all sorts of education. Yeah. So right. I think true. putting those kind of limits on it would, would be detrimental because, you know, no offense to my <laughs> chosen profession, yeah. but how many people really mm -hmm. <laughs> librarianship? Yeah. Right, right. Yeah. yeah, I was just thinking about like using the money instead of for students now, like for buying books, college books that kids could use, but that's, I think that's crazy. Oh, 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 so buying. Um... So that's why I was saying like library sciences, mm -hmm. because the thing is, you know, the books are so expensive and they change pretty much every year. So, you know, we wouldn't be able to buy that many books. You know, it's not like you can say, oh, we'll buy books for <laughs> any major. So that's, but I, the more I, when, you know, if it's not something located close to the library, it's, doesn't make any sense anyway. So again, yeah, just I mean, uh, there are already, you know, people who, you know, uh, will email us or, or request, you know, their textbooks through us, um, which, you know, I'd love to be able to provide that, but most libraries don't, you know, I'll carry, you know, if you're reading F. Scott Fitzgerald or something, yes, of course I carry that. Yeah. But you know, Intro to Economics is not a book that I, you know, especially the newest edition by this particular author. It's right. not, something that I carry, you know. Um, right. That's, yeah. Yeah. So anyway, so I think maybe calling the guidance counselors is a good idea because maybe they would have some insight as to programming that we could offer that would be beneficial to that demographic. I mean, I think, I don't know. Yeah, well, I, I can uh, I can do that. I'm not um, looking to give you more work, Judy. I'm just thinking that it might make your presentation easier to the whole board if we are armed with a little more knowledge in this, right. that process. Okay. Well, this isn't something that has to be decided today. Um, right. Because we're not doing a scholarship this year. It doesn't even have to be decided this month. So certainly we can set a date to meet again. And in the meantime, Judy, you can do your homework and I'll do my homework on the history and maybe we all can give it a little more thought. Maybe hopefully plan to present it to the board in May. How does that sound? I don't think we, we want to drag it into next year. Oh yeah, no, that May, yeah. Right, the end of May, sure. Or is, is there going to be Okay. Yeah, well, I can, uh, you know, next week I can put a call and I to the um, if, high school and say, if you want to put a call in and then we all meet again, I think that's what Mary's saying. So, yeah, like, and we'll board meeting I, is 26. So, if you don't want to rush making a decision and talk to someone who might have some information and then right. we all meet again knowing that information then in may we can approach the whole board right in other words we wouldn't i wouldn't have to come up with a presentation in, in case they don't get back to me right away right you could just say at the meeting on the 26th that we're we're still in discussion and that we'll present our findings and thoughts at the next meeting in may mm -hmm. so i think it's too important to rush Right. I think that I think we accomplished a lot today. I think we we sort of went from what we have to what we might have. Mm -hmm. I mean, we seem to all be on the same page, which is great. We mm -hmm. we are half the board, uh, <clears throat> but um, you know, I, I think we want to make sure that we're doing the right thing. Right. We can. Yeah. This way, it gives us an opportunity to do a little research to see if if what we're thinking, like. Because Tom said, you know, we have all these people that are doing it pro bono, but maybe there's a way to make this something that we can really offer and not just something that all right. and even already if, exists right. and, you know, but bring it up a notch because that's, I mean. Right. And not necessarily, as you said before, if it's somebody 
who's maybe doing it pro bono, but they're, they've got an agenda in terms of helping or not helping people. I know that, I know, I, I was just thinking my sister when girls were going into college, I remember her going to one meeting that, and she said, you know, they just want to, it's like they want to sell you an insurance policy. You know, they, they may give you a little bit of information, but it's like a tease and then you have to pay. And as you say, not everybody can afford to pay for all. Like I have friends that like they're certain their things. Kids, like I have two friends whose kids meet with a college counselor who's supposed to really help guide them to you know choose the right college get all the information they need and it's a professional that you pay right but these are both friends that send their kids to worcester school so right. they have this they you know have, they yeah. have the, the money anyway yeah. you know and right. so i i just you know it just to help help so the, we're trying to benefit the bed you know the bethel community not not the people that you know can afford necessarily to hire these people on their own. Now, yeah. Now, Mary, have you let the um, people in the library, I mean, in, not in the library, but if you help the people uh, who are the guidance counselors know that if you've told them that we're not giving a scholarship this year? Oh yeah, I called them right away after we okay. made that decision. So they know that that's happening? Yeah, well, they were yeah, upset. Okay. But I think it was that Corinne Chiardi that you were yeah, mentioning. Yeah, Corinne Caridi, yeah. Caridi, is that how you pronounce it? I think it's how you pronounce it. No, I don't know. But she's she the one that we work with, with the lot. That's the one that they work with for the- um, For your- Alumni Bethel. Association, oh. yeah. Well, she I don't, but I don't, that's not my thing. That's Lynn Fenz, she's- Yeah. Uh, talks to her. Mm. Uh, but she's the one that we- contacted and that's just I don't know as I said um, it's a different it's a whole different thing because that the alumni association already limits you to you know being an alumni of the, yeah. uh, of the high school so, I don't know but we were very pleasantly surprised that all this money started coming in after we put this little blurb in the um, in the newsletter, you know, you can actually People like to do that, don't I, in memory? Right. Of right. And I think maybe yeah. because this year, yeah. too, because you couldn't go to yeah, like three lakes or, or, was off just or, a little here and there, you know? Right. Right. We did it to the library and to the Knights of Columbus. Right. People like that. Yeah. That's, and, uh, right. And we, we do, um, you know, publicize the names of the people that they had um, asked it in memory of so that everybody kind of knows. Yeah, that's nice. Yeah. Well, we, we certainly can do that through our development committee. If we do some form of an endowment program, mm -hmm. we can yeah. encourage people to give for these different purposes. I mean, right. that certainly should be our goal for the, for the future. Right, absolutely. But in the meantime, we'd have to, maybe this would be a, like a stop. See, I don't know, maybe that, maybe she won't be able to, or whoever it is I talked to, won't be able to give any ideas off the top of their head either. Well, I can think about it, but Tom, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm not trying to be obnoxious, but what time do you usually get through? You, you mean in my, when I'm normally working? Yes. Uh, I'm 18 minutes over. That's <laughs> what I was figuring. <laughs> <laughs> it looked like you were looking out the window. <laughs> um, you no, know, I'm, I'm no. getting ready for planning dinner, so you know. No, I know, but I was thinking, you know, we can just let you go home and stop. Oh, <laughs> so why don't we set a date for another meeting? Okay. okay. <laughs> Should I make a motion to adjourn and we can have another meeting in another couple of weeks? Or should we make the that sounds good. Yeah. You gotta do the meeting first and then you can adjourn. Yeah, we have to figure out what, what's a good uh, meeting. Is it, is we can't just plan the meeting via email. <laughs> Tuesday, May 4th. Three weeks from now. Okay with me. 
Okay. Mm -hmm. Is four is four p.m. a good time? Mm hmm. Okay. Okay, and Robin, you made it. Okay, you made a motion to adjourn. I do. I'm four o'clock. Was it again? Mm -hmm. Yep. Tuesday, May fourth at four. I just had to check my book. Thank you, everybody. We got a lot thought about to think about tonight. A lot to think about. Yeah, I think we made some progress. Jan, are you okay with all this? We sort of lifted yeah. things oh, to get back to your board. I'm not going to say anything to them except that we're still working. Great. Fine. Okay. Okay. Did, ever, did any, are we adjourned? I think we're adjourned. Yes. Everybody. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Yes. All right. See Thank you. you.